Hi everybody, Dr. Kathy, how are you today? I am so happy to see you. COVID-19, I know it's here. It's been devastating for quite a few of us, right? Everything's closed down. We have to find a way to entertain ourselves. But please, let's say a prayer for those that have been affected by COVID-19. Please, our sympathies, our condolences are with you. Today, we're going to focus more on what we can do at home with the time that we have now to sort of make it a little bit easier for us, right? Okay, so I'm Dr. Kathy. I'm a sex doctor and I love to talk about sex, which means, stay tuned, we're here to talk about the one and only sex in terms of sexual wellness, okay? I am... How did I get here? I am a doctor that trained regularly in a conventional allopathic medical school. And it's amazing how my life has come to this point where I'm talking about sex. But sex, to me, explains your health. I can tell how, he how healthy you are by how sick you are, okay? There is a close correlation. And I'm not here quoting any studies, so I'm going to make a disclaimer right now. What I say and what I believe is what I say and what I believe. Don't take it to the bank. This is something that you have to do your own research and try it out for yourself. Now, I always say try it out with the help of, you know, a doctor or a provider that can actually guide you. Because I have traveled the world and I know that my experiences are not the same as those that have not. And even those that have traveled, I have not traveled as far as they have, but I have my own unique experiences and I want you to understand that I bring this to you in the most helpful way so that you can make your own life better. Okay, that's my game plan, right? Now, I am, even though I am still a board certified family practice doctor, I use a lot of other techniques and, and information and procedures and, and, and ideas to bring to you what I'm going to do today, all right? And I'm going to break it up into different parts, part one, part two, part three, part four. So bear with me as I try to give you a lot of what I've learned on my journey. I graduated back in 1989 and here we are, 2020, right? 30, going to be 31 years ago. So please understand that this is for adults, singles, married couples, people that are just looking out to date and just trying to understand their sexual wellness and trying to understand who they are. It's not for everyone. If you're having great sex, you don't need me. Go have fun. But for those that want to improve their sex life, I think you might learn a thing or two from me. And remember, safe sex is crucial, very important. Always have that in the back of your mind. Have him tested, please be tested. I test my single women and men, every three months. That's what I recommend. Now, whether they agree to it or not is another story, but I really prefer for them to be tested every three months. My married couples, I would like them to be tested yearly, okay? So it's very important for you to decide. You're the adult, but like all I can do is make recommendations. That would be, again, you're single out there, do it every three months to stay on top of it. Or if you meet a new guy, test him, test yourself, Take that opportunity to do that then. So that's what I do in my office. Walk into my office, we draw blood. We're vampires. I am a vampire. And I like it because I get to know who you are. I get to know things about you before it even rears its ugly head or, or shows its ugly head. So my game plan is to make sure that you know about yourself more than what I even know because I'm going to teach you, right? And you're going to take me and yourself to the next level of health, okay? So why sex? Sex is important, y'all. Sex is where how we got here, and where we are very intimate with our partners. So I truly believe that a way to a man's heart is through sex. Forget food. It's not food, you guys. Yeah, they told us it was food when we were younger. Hmm, they told us a lot of things when we were younger, right? But we now, as adults, have to realize that it's not all princess and prince stories that are going to be coming true for us, right? Maybe some of you have that story, but unfortunately, the vast majority of us do not have that Prince Charming story to talk about. We have reality, which means men are men, women are women, right? Now, this is not my recommendation in terms of a must. This is just a suggestion that sex and improving your sexual life, improving your sexual knowledge will 
give you more control of not only yourself, but your relationship. I think if we could all just make love and not war, we would be much happier. We would be in a happier place. But we're making war a lot, not enough love. And that's why I'm here to talk to you guys. I want to make sure that you guys are having the best sexual relations as po if possible or as possible, okay? So what can we do about that? All right, we're going to learn, okay? So let's dial it back a little bit, okay? So how old are we? How far back? Do we humans go, right? We're talking about millions of years, right? The first man, okay? The first man as we are. And we're talking about millions of years. And so to be here, we've had sex all those years. So go think about it. Yeah, back then it was probably much more basic, right? But all living creatures, every living life, in a way has either asexual sex or bisexual sex, which is what we have. We have uh, sex, reproductive sex, and where two people are used in terms of their gametes and we actually get together and have sex, okay? So that is basically what sex is about. But we have conquered the earth as humans and we have been able to achieve not only, oh my gosh, most the most beautiful achievements in the world, but we have been able to be the big kahuna on this earth which means that we have to sort of like take advantage of that fact and learn evolve and grow right when we were younger sex was taboo sex was just for the naughty girls right and now sex is not for the naughty girls sex is for everybody and we can partake and enjoy it to whatever degree you or your partner are willing to go and i'm going to encourage you with consent, go as high as you can. You only live once, okay? So how do we do that? We have to start from somewhere. And I'm gonna start from the basics because I'm not sure how much knowledge we have about this. And as a board certified doctor, and as a woman, and as a mother of four, I can tell you that I have a few little tricks up my sleeves that I can share with you, okay? But I first wanna give you the knowledge of what is sex and I won't say the sex itself is the knowledge I'm going to give you, but more of the orgasm, okay? Now, that's a tough one, right? What is the orgasm? The orgasm is the rhythmic contraction of your muscles in your groin, all right? So just say your pelvic floor, your pelvic floor muscles just start contracting, all right? Rhythmically and then involuntarily, involuntarily out of control. Okay, boom, 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 ah. And then you explode and from the groin up to the top of your head, down to the tip of your toes, you start to shake and vibrate. Now the guys get this the most, why? It's easier for them to have an orgasm. I think it's probably because they're not as complex or complicated as us. And I talk about that anatomy wise, okay? We are so complicated, I'll wait till I tell you why. But guys, you're lucky, so enjoy that. And that's probably what they do, they enjoy it. The other reason is that they have very high levels of testosterone. Testosterone can go, go up to like 1,100 uh, in terms of numbers, while we go up to 40 in terms of numbers. But you'll find some women that are a little bit more than 40. So those women that are a little bit more than 40 have a little bit more of a sex drive than those that are closer to 20 or 10 or five. So hormone levels will play a big role too, okay? So always get your hormone levels checked and tested, all right? So when you're 18, 19, 20, they're at their highest for guys and for women, and then as you get older, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it starts to peter off and go down. Some people are lucky and actually have levels that last for a long time into their 80s. I had one guy come into my office and measured his testosterone level, and I'm looking at him like, what? Yeah, he was high. And I asked him what was the secret, and he said, He's not married, no kids, eats well. I'm like, yeah, right. And he goes, yep, that's a secret. Well, I met another guy. And he was actually my neighbor. And he actually had um, this physique, like he was on testosterone. And I said, you must be taking testosterone. And he says, nope, never had it in his life. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, I've been pretty lucky and blessed that you should see my father, who's in his 80s, and my son, who's in his 20s. And I said, please let me see them. And there they were 
father in his 80s looked great, toned, muscular, healthy. And um, son, same thing, in his 20s, toned, muscular, healthy. Genetics, absolutely, okay? So everyone has their own testosterone levels, partly genetics, partly environmental. They say more environmental than genetics. I tend to waver there. It's like sometimes I think more genetics. I guess it depends on what it is but the environment does play a big role, all right? We would not be who we are without this environmental influence. And we have to concede that we can actually influence genes to a certain extent by the environment that we're in. Oh, we're so